Hello, my name is Robert Berrio. Welcome to my channel. Today I will tell you the story of the last leg of my Ottawa-Toronto trip and how a trip that was supposed to take me to Niagara Falls has been cut short when I reached Metropolitan Toronto. This final leg covers a route between Glen Rouge Campground in Scarborough and the home of my friend Ian in Mississauga. The map shows Glen Rouge Campground in the upper right corner and then you have the CN Tower in downtown Toronto in the middle and Ian's place in Mississauga in the bottom left corner. We begin on Kingston Road at the entrance of the campground towards a series of side streets that will take us to the waterfront trail. Today I don't want a repeat of yesterday when I ended up riding through the major four and six lane streets of the greater Toronto area. I'm making a special effort to follow the waterfront trail wherever it's available. Here you see me making a futile attempt at finding the waterfront trail. My strategy will be, once every 10 kilometers or so, to use Google Maps to take me to a street near the waterfront in an attempt to force the software to show me the trails along the waterfront. What I've found repeatedly is that sometimes there's a trail nearby according to Google Maps, but the software doesn't highlight it as a route to follow. Further into this video, you'll see a blatant case of where Google Maps does the opposite. It leads me onto a trail that's on the map, but it isn't a trail. Now that we're on the waterfront trail, we will enjoy trails most of the way to downtown Toronto. Riding in large urban areas invariably takes me onto very busy and very noisy streets, which isn't very pleasant. I don't mind the two-lane streets with parking on either side. I feel at home on those streets. Those are the kinds of streets that I grew up with. What I don't like is the four-lane and six-lane streets where vehicles can easily reach 80 kilometers an hour. Some of these busy arteries offer bicycle lanes or paved shoulders marked off with a white line that's much safer and more pleasant. Some parts of the waterfront trail through the Greater Toronto area are very beautiful. I have no idea what this cop car is doing here, but I'm not stopping to ask. But even though some urban multi-use pathways are pleasant and sometimes beautiful, getting to the trailhead or finding the connection between two trails often involves riding on busy streets and sometimes requires backtracking when I've taken a wrong turn. Sometimes I have to use trial and error as a means of finding the next section of trail. This has been the problem repeatedly since I began this trip. We're now in Port Union Waterfront Park. Now we're riding on the section of trail between Port Union Waterfront Park and East Point Park. I find that the absence of buildings and the infinite horizon over the water and the immensity of Lake Ontario give me the impression that I'm riding along the shore of the ocean. This is delightful and helps me forget the unpleasantness of the streets I rode on yesterday. Now I'm going to shut up for a while and let you enjoy the sights of this magnificent trail.
On the other side of this little bridge is East Point Park. East Point Park is a migratory resting and feeding area for monarch butterflies and over 178 species of birds. Here we're looking around the softball center pavilion. Now I'm on Beach Grove Drive and I'm going to be looking for the next connection to the waterfront trail. This looks a little fishy. Google Maps tells me that this part of the waterfront trail will lead me to the next one. It doesn't look very bumpy and it's only 500 meters long and it will save me a few kilometers of streets. So I decide to have a crack at it. I'm starting to have second thoughts about this. It seems as though the ruts are becoming more and more grassy as we move along. And you know, if it wasn't for the fact that it won't be easy to turn around in this uh, trail, I think I'd stop now and turn around. But let's continue. Geez, this is where the trail stops. And now I have no choice but to turn back. And now I'm paying the price for my unwise decision. This is my 13th day on the road and I feel more tired than at the beginning. I don't know if it's the 12 rounds of chemotherapy which ended in July or if it's old age creeping up on me. Maybe it's both. If it's the chemo there's a chance that in six months that I'll get over it but if it's due to old age hmm, nobody gets any younger. We're now on the Martin Goodman Trail, a long multi-use trail that leads to downtown Toronto and then continues beyond. As you'll see, there is a lot of very beautiful beaches along this trail. This is known as Woodbine Beach.
Now we're getting ever closer to downtown. I'm going to be facing a choice, right, left, or straight ahead. It's not going to be an easy choice, but it turns out that I make the right one. Just like in the Ottawa Gatineau area, signage is almost non-existent. Well, we finally reached downtown and now we're on Queen's Key Trail. Now I'm looking for a good vantage point from which to view the CN Tower. It's hot today. Really, really hot. Apparently the humidex today is 47 degrees. And I'm really starting to feel the effect of the heat. And I've reached the CN Tower at last. And here is me making a selfie of myself and the tower. Oh, 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 
and onwards to Mississauga. This is still the Martin Goodman Trail and we're near the Humber Shore. The Martin Goodman Trail turns into the Humber Bay Trail. Now that the Toronto skyline is in full view, it's time for a picture. You might have noticed that the bottom part of my t-shirt looks wet. Well, that's because it was wet. Um, actually, I stopped at a convenience store uh, and went to the bathroom and uh, took my t-shirt off and soaked it in cold water and put it over my head to cool myself down and then I wore the t-shirt and I had a full bottle of cold Gatorade as well to cool down the insides. Well I think my method worked. Um, I did this twice actually. I did this another time on the way to Ian's and um, fortunately I think it worked and um, I didn't get sick. I was very very hot when I got to Ian's place and uh, but sleeping in the basement of the air-conditioned house uh, did me a lot of good. Now we're stopping to have a look at the Mimico Cruising Club. I guess it's a yacht club but they call it Cruising Club. Now I'm leaving the trails and I'm taking to the streets to reach my friend Ian's place. Now that I've decided to end the trip here, I can reflect on the adventure of the past 13 days. I love riding a bicycle, travel and camping. I also crave adventure, the unknown, discovering places I haven't been to before. I love national parks, I love nature, hiking, canoeing, kayaking, sailing. When I travel, I usually avoid large cities. I prefer traveling with no fixed itinerary in mind than choosing a destination arbitrarily as I've done this time. At this point, I see no reason to continue to Niagara Falls as I had originally planned on. I've accomplished the main goal of the trip and that is to test my bicycle camper in a variety of road conditions. I'm going to report about the performance of the trailer in a future video. As a postscript, I'll mention Ian's hobby. He's the owner of a 1930 Model A Ford and belongs to a club of Model A enthusiasts. Watch these video clips. Listen to that sound. <gasps> oh, that is priceless. I was adjusting the clutch. I 
first time on the road it was. It felt like you needed to push the clutch another inch below the floorboard to disengage. It was noisy. I hope you enjoyed my series of videos about my trip from the Peace Tower to the CN Tower. If you did, please leave me a like. And if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.